we've seen how firms recruit workers on a matching market. Now let's see how they use these workers uh, for their production. So in the firm, we'll have um, two types of workers. So firms employ uh, two types of workers. First type that we've discussed is that they're going to employ. <coughs> so they'll employ L minus N recruiters. So these guys, their goal is to fill uh, vacant jobs. And therefore, because they are busy filling vacant jobs, uh, they do not participate in production. So you can think of them as being part of the HR department. So they are necessary for the firm to operate properly, to be able to fill their vacant jobs and have workers, but they are not going to participate directly in production. So that's L minus N recruiters. And then we'll have N producers. So these guys, uh, as their name indicates, they participate in production and not in, they are not involved in recruiting. Uh, <clears throat> and we know actually that this L minus N recruiters, you can also write it as star hat of theta times N. Uh, so that's how we define our matching wedge that for any, if you have, for any number of producers, you have tau theta, tau of theta, uh, tau hat of theta times that number of producers is the number of recruiters that's necessary to uh, fill the number of vacancies that are required to actually get that number of producers. So this is L minus N is just tau of theta times N here. So they participate in production. So uh, now the question is, of course, what's the shape of the production function? Uh, so we have a production function for the firm. And our production function is going to give, so it's going to relate uh, the capacity of the firm to the number of producers. Uh, so the production function is going to be K, the capacity, oops. K is going to be A times N to the power of alpha. So this is going to be our production function. So what are all these things here? Uh, so it's a fairly you know, simple concave production function, strictly increasing in the number of producers. So uh, we have two parameters. First parameter is A, uh, strictly positive. What is A? A is the technology of the firm. So it indicates you know, how uh, productive the firm is, and when we want to model technology shocks, this will be shocked to the parameter A in the production function. Then we have alpha. Um, alpha will be strictly positive, and it will be strictly less than 1. Um, and so alpha captures diminishing marginal returns to labor. Uh, so the fact that alpha is positive says that, yes, if you have more producers, your capacity will be higher, um, but with diminishing marginal returns. Uh, and it's critical to have diminishing marginal returns uh, to have a well-behaved uh, labor demand curve. Uh, so you could, you know, in fact, typically in matching models, it's assumed that production functions are linear. and you know, here, if you wanted a linear production function, you would set alpha to one. However, a linear production function leads to a degenerate labor demand. Uh, and, you know, we'll see how in a moment, um, but it gives you a labor demand that would be actually uh, horizontal. So the concept of 
uh, having you know a certain number of jobs that's determined by labor demand would uh, would disappear if we had a linear uh, labor demand. And so if we want to have a non-degenerate downward sloping labor demand, like we're I guess used to in economics, and that captures this idea of a uh, somewhat limited number of jobs, uh, we need to have diminishing marginal returns to labor. Um, and that's so you know so this is. Uh, Require to obtain a non-degenerate labor demand, and that was um, basically the point of my job market paper. Uh, one of the points to show that once you introduce diminishing marginal returns to labor, you get non-degenerate labor demand, and then you get a lot of very interesting effects in matching model, and you get a much more general uh, model in which both so here we are thinking about the labor market, so in which both labor demand and labor supply matter. Whereas with a linear production function, alpha equal one, your labor demand is degenerate. And as a result, the only thing that matters really is going to be the labor supply. You only have supply side effects and the, you eliminate all interesting demand side effects of the model by making that assumption. Uh, so whereas with this more general setup, we get a lot of interesting effect from the supply side and the demand side. Uh, it's something that I had covered in, uh, in my job market paper. Uh, so if you want to have a look at why having diminishing marginal returns to labor matter, you can, you can have a look at it. Uh, so these are the two parameters. And then we have uh, the arguments in the production function. So n positive, that's the number of producers. And so as you can see, and that's very key here, it's not the total number of employees that enter the production function, like what we would have in a standard model, but it's the number of producers. And the reason why uh, it's not the number of employees is because not all employees are productive. All the recruiters are required to hire workers, but they are not going to enter the production function. That's one key thing. And then the other thing that, so that's you know, a little bit different from what you would have in a standard model. Uh, the second thing that's different is that what usually the production function tells you how many goods or services are uh, produced and therefore will be consumed. But here, these two things are not the same. You know, the number of goods that are purchased by households, by customers, is not at all the same as what comes out of the production function. The production function gives you a capacity for the firm. It gives you the number of services that the firm may be able to sell if it found enough customers. But of course, through the matching process, not all these services would be sold. So the capacity of the firm that's given by the production function is not the same as the output of the firm. And the output will always be less and capacity because of our matching process. Um, you know, in the same way that in the basic model, the output was always less than the capacity K uh, because, of the because of the matching process here, it's the same. Output will always be less than capacity because of the matching process. And then consumption will be less than output because part of uh, this output is used for matching. So because of the matching wedge. Um, so K positive, that's going to be uh, firm's productive uh, capacity. And this capacity is uh, the number of services that could be sold with enough customers. But of course, uh, in practice, firm will sell less than capacity because of matching function. So if you want, if you're thinking about a hair salon, the capacity of a hair salon would be, say, you know, so eight hours a day that the hairdresser works, or if you have several hairdressers times you know, the, the, say like the eight hours that the salon is open times the number of chairs in the salon 
you know, if you have like five chairs in your hair salon, so your capacity would be, you know, 40, a total of say like 40 hours of hair cutting that could be provided by the salon. But of course, because not all the slots during the day are filled, you always have chairs that are empty at any point in time. And so the output of your hair salon would be less than the capacity. Uh, that's because of the matching process. Um, but what the production function give us is the capacity. And then how much is actually sold, that would be given by the matching function. And of course, the market tightness, which, then, which will itself be determined by uh, not only the supply side, but also the demand side and the aggregate demand of the, uh, in the market. Um, So in fact, we can already, uh, I mean, that we already know and you know, we can just flag it here. Uh, what is sold is, and we know what is, how much is sold, what is going to be F of X, which affects the selling probability times K, which is strictly less than K. Uh, F of X is your selling probability that comes out of the matching function. So the matching function does, the production function doesn't say how much is going to be sold, what is the output? It tells us how much could be sold. Uh, and in general, what is sold would be less than this. Um, 